Okay, so we are continuing the strategic planning series. Um, today, we're going to discuss on how to set a direction for an organization or how to set a direction for a company. But before then, it will be fine for us to go back and perhaps recap what we discussed the last time. So our lecture one, we talked about the introduction to strategic planning. So the first things we did was that we asked the question that does strategic planning has practical relevance today? And we say yes. And the reason be that there are a lot of companies that are doing strategic plans. We, we hear it in the radio, we see it in the papers, and we have a lot of case studies also from the books. So um, that made us to know that what we are doing as postgraduate student has some empirical war relevance. Today, um, we, will, we will look at the directional setting, but before then, I want you to know that, first of all, every lecture we do builds on the previous one. So in the last session, I talked about how do we conceive strategic plan. So I gave four main themes that ought to consist of a strategic plan. I talk about the fact that every strategic plan must have the future plans of a firm. Number two, I said to the fact that the future plans of a firm must take into consideration the internal capacity of the firm. I also said that when you have future plans and it is tied to the internal capacity, the two must be aligned with the changing trends from the environment. And we're saying that when these three things are in place, every strategic plan must also take into consideration the expectations of every stakeholder that has interest in the company. So that was how we conceived strategic plan. Then I went on to talk about why companies do strategic plan. In this case, the benefit of strategic plan. And I mentioned something like the fact that strategic plan act as a control tool. It acts as a control tool. Number two, I also said that today, strategic plan has become a strong tool for sourcing funding for organization and also looking forward investors. Then step three in our lecture, I talked about strategic decision, strategic actions, and then strategic initiatives. So we said strategic initiatives or decisions give rise to strategic plans. Strategic decisions, strategic initiatives, strategic actions give rise to strategic plan. And we looked at the characteristics of strategic decisions. And we said that those characteristics make us to really understand what we mean by strategic decisions. So we, we talk about the fact that number one, strategic decisions often come from the board of the organization, come from the top management. And we say that normally strategic decisions also accompanies high financial resource investment. So step one, how do we conceive strategic plan? Step two, strategic decisions and their characteristics. And then step three, we we'll talk about the benefit. Step four, we we'll look at the risk. And then the last thing we we'll talk about before we finish the last section was the skills that is needed to do a practical hands-on strategic plan. So today, quickly, let's go into a direction. Now, the first thing we are trying to say that do companies, do organizations need direction? Remember, the topic is about how to determine the direction of what a firm. And we're asking the question, do companies need a direction? The answer is yes, especially if a firm is growing from small to medium to large scale. It is a key requirement. It is a mandatory word requirement that within the operating environment, this firm try to identify the award a direction. So setting a direction is very, 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 very important. It has a lot of advantages. For example, the directional setting makes an organization to know that which of the industry arena will their resources, you know, come out with a lot of returns. 
Of course, no company can operate everywhere. So trying to carve a direction means that you're trying to answer the question within the arena, where can I operate to be able to get the maximum return out of what? My resources. So direction is very important. So if you look at the banking industry, you will see that there are a number of companies operating within that arena, but they're doing different, 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 different things. If you come to the education industry, there are a lot of organizations doing different, different, different programs. If you go to the manufacturing sector, you will see a lot of companies, but they're concentrating on different, 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 different things. This is what we mean, we mean by what? The direction that the organization has chosen for itself. So the purpose of the lecture is about how does an organization determine or carve a direction for itself. That is the first thing. Now, before we go into it, we want to first of all um, say that to make it easy for an organization to know what direction that it has to set for itself, there are a number of key strategic questions that this organization must address and here are samples of these questions here are samples of this question so number one is saying that for example this is in connection with the fact that we are assuming that the organization is a commercial or for profit making organization and we're saying that before you can identify a direction these questions will help the organization to arrive at a particular direction for themselves so number one we're saying that questions like which industry must a firm operate which industry and especially for commercial organization that are for profit this has a lot of implications so why this industry not the other industry why this sector and not the other sector so number two i am in a sector why is i'm there can i be everywhere o obviously not so we're saying which product or service must a firm develop or grow in which product so number one which sector even if it is a multi businesses if it's a firm that has different businesses it is obvious that they're not entering the sector just for entering sake so i am in the sector and we're, we're, we're saying that why is in the sector what service what product must i develop so I have carved a specific sector and then within the sector I have identified specific service or what product then the third thing is that with what market must I concentrate what market must I be only here in Ghana even within Ghana must I find myself in the metropolis must I go to the countryside and why so we say carving a direction for a firm there are a number of key questions and these questions are robust. In fact, one of them can take a week before management can arrive at. Why? Because it has a lot of world consequences and world implications. So coming back, the summary of it all is that the first thing to determine which direction I carve for my firm is that organizations must address key questions, especially with regard to for-profit organization these samples of questions are so 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 crucial for them crucial for them now apart from the question questions so these are all some of the questions but because of time we can't go through all so all that we're trying to say is that certain key questions must inform how we carve a direction for a firm now after we have addressed the question the stage two is that there are a number of things that also determine which direction an organization concentrates there are a number of events so apart from management yeah, the difference between this one and the previous one is that apart from management posing and addressing certain key questions the number two is saying that there are certain trends there are certain triggers there are certain event pinpointing suggesting to organizations like you have to think alongside these lines and number one is saying trends from the national and international environment so for example in recent time we're hearing that the mining companies are struggling because of the gold price so it's not surprising for us to hear that 
organization like AGC, they're doing retrenchment. Why are they doing retrenchment? It's a as a result of an event coming from the war, the environment. Number two is about financial capacity. Maybe the firm is doing so, 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 so well. You understand? If the firm is doing so well, they need to turn themselves well around. So the internal financial capacity will suggest to them things that they have to do what? Do. Number three, maybe demand potential. Demand potential. Demand potential. So if a firm has a direction that is based on a demand-driven activity, it has a lot of what? Benefit. So these are some of the events apart from the company itself you understand addressing certain key questions we're saying that to make the thinking to make the analysis so easy there are certain events there are certain triggers that can make or that can help organizations to carve a direction for themselves so that is state two now state three okay so these are all some of the factors for example maybe a company will get a new chief executive or perhaps a new executive team and these executive teams they have wonderful wonderful vision and when they come on board they can drive the organization from where it is to another lot level a vision of new chief executive and so forth and so on so now when i decide on a direction eventually they translate into strategic intent or strategic priorities saying that i have tried to address all the questions all right i'm privy to all the event both the national environment and the international environment so at this point i need to say this and this and this are the things i want to do as well organization or perhaps this and this and this are the things I want to do to distinct me from another sister company operating within the same sector. So the first two things will arrive us to something we call in strategic planning as well, strategic intent. Some people will say strategic priorities, strategic intents, strategic priorities. So we're saying that going forward, what and what are our priorities? Okay, priorities. So the intent is basically saying that what is driving the company, all right, from now onwards, having been informed about those key questions and the event taking place within the national and the world, the international environment. And we're saying that the developing or designing the intent. All right, ought to have certain form. Okay, in the in the light of international best war practices. So we say when organizations at the end of the day they're trying to summarize their direction into intent and priority, there are certain form that it has to take. Number one is saying that we 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 have to see strategic intent and priorities in just thematic forms, just thematic thematic you know with brief war explanations okay so we it should just be in the form of a phrase simple sentences themes all right as the main event sorry intent driving the organization number two is saying that if you are designing an intent or if you are designing strategic priorities they have to be in the form of what an end as opposed to what a means to an end because we're asking we're saying that this is the output that the firm intends to achieve going war forward so it has to be end products it has to be end products then we're saying that senior management must do this one yeah in conjunction with both internal and external stakeholders and we're saying that it must have a minimum of sometimes three and a maximum of war nine so strategic intent and priority shouldn't be so much and this point is very 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 important the reason being that we can have about two or three intent yeah but they have a lot of characteristic effect what i mean by that is that if we're able to achieve just one of them 
okay, the rippling effect and the trickle down effect will affect several aspects of what the organization. So because of that catalyst effect, we don't need plenty of what intent or priorities. So three, four, five, or maybe at most or at worst, a maximum of how many? Nine. Okay? Right. Now, let's maybe at this juncture, let me find out if you have any question to ask to what we have just said. Doc, please, I would like to take you back to uh, the direction. Mm -hmm. You made mention of uh, the vision of a new CEO. And I would like to know, um, basically, the direction is also determined by the board and the stakeholders. So with a vision of a new CEO, Will it going to uh, will it conflict with the uh, other stakeholders as to how they want the firm to be directed or not? Okay, yeah, that's a wonderful question. Yes, now firm direction must be determined by the top management. Yes, but they are suggested by individual stakeholders. So when there's a new CEO and the CEO has a wonderful vision, all right. The CEO will suggest the vision, and the, that vision can drive the whole organization. The, the key indicator is that just justification of that vision should warm the heart and mind of everyone who is part of the top management team. So yes, it's a management decision, but the decision can come from only you. All that we're trying to say is that when you justify the, mission, the vision, all right, at the end of the day, it should be a vision that everybody see a sense in it, all right? A sense in terms of profitability, growth, survival, development, all kinds of stuff. So it's a collective decision, but always it is suggested by one person. And then the justification makes it something that everybody accepts it. So yes, it's a collective decision, but it can come from just a single chief war is it or maybe even any ordinary member of the board so to come back we're discussing how organizations determine their direction within a country within a sector and we're saying that number one those directions must be determined by a number of what key questions then two we're saying that to make the directional setting so easy Organizations are also informed by events, both within the national and then the international environment. Then we say that when these things come together, at the end of the day, companies must well, arrive at certain things we call strategic intent and war well, priorities. And then we're saying that in designing strategic intent and priority, there's a particular form that it has to take from strategic planning viewpoint. Strategic planning viewpoint. So once we have our intents and we have our priorities, then we translate this into a vision and war a mission. So for example, if you take or you look at the University of Ghana strategic plan, which is put at the preparatory school, you will see that there are strategic priorities, I think about nine of them, and then, you know, University of Ghana is a big university, and then on that, you will see University of Ghana vision, University of Ghana mission, and then the strategic word intent. So strategic intent or strategic priorities, but we also have the vision and the war, the mission. So what is the relationship between and among these things? It is the same intent. It is the same priorities giving rise to the word, the vision. We're trying to say that if we summarize the 19th University of Ghana intent to do, all right, where is it trying to take us to? That is the vision. The vision. And we're saying that currently, even though we're saying that we're going to do nine main things, but currently, what are we doing? What can we be noted of? Or what can we be known of? So what is University of Ghana's basic purpose in terms of which programs they're running? So we say this is re related, 
all right to the world the mission so vision taking us to the long journey and we're saying that currently this is what our world, basic purpose so the fact that you have strategic intent or priority doesn't mean that the company mustn't come out with what it mission or a vision now one thing that i like to really emphasize is that if you you're thinking about doing a strategic plan you're thinking about what and what are the component or the element of a strategic plan this lecture number two is so 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 important if you want to pick a typical strategic plan of a company or any organizations at all all the element that you will see in this lecture too they're likely to be found over there so simply if somebody say that review a strategic plan you could look at all the indicators that have presented in the lecture too whether or not they present themselves so for example things like what well, strategic intent or strategic priorities every good strategic plan must have strategic intent and strategic war priorities then besides we're saying that the company must also go ahead and have a vision and a mission so when i pick a strategic plan where designed by expert from strategic point of view i need to identify strategic intent strategic priority and i must also identify vision for the company and also what ambition now these are not the only elements so apart from these four things the company must also go ahead to have what we call strategic goals so we have covered all these things i'll come back to the activities the companies the company must also have what strategic goals and you will see that it is the same intent priorities vision mission that we translate into what goals goals all right so you might see organizations saying that this is our corporate word goals going forward some will say this and these are our word strategic goals and they are drawn from the vision and the mission and the intent and the world the priorities and the goals are basically um an intentions behind the mission and the vision and it's it's just like it gives a lot of motivation to the company to do what they want to do but moving forward one thing i like to make clear is that you know because organizations differ we have commercial organizations we have NGOs and we have government public sector organizations the element are the same but in in terms of trying to address them to design a mission statement you are likely to identify a slight difference from for-profit organizations NGOs and public sector organization so if you look at the activity on the board and this come up when organizations are doing practical strategic plans what and what are some of the different terminologies for a vision so you hear company will say this are slogan motto credo um, and then sometimes in for clarity you need to look at the difference between a mission and uh, a vision and you have all these ones there um and then there are characteristics of a mission that the things i have put there they help if an organization is designing a practical mission statement so the key characteristics are here they're here what functions do organizations um, have when they're designing a mission statement so these are all here for you and then this is a key question the question is do mission statement have a lifespan and why and again i'd like you to reflect on these things as you go along so we have vision and we have mission and we're saying that do mission statement have lifespan 
So I was talking about goals. All right. So if you look at the themes, phrases I've just put into double quotations, these are goals. So like I said, they act as a driver, helping organizations to achieve the mission and their world, the vision. So look, efficiency, effectiveness, productivity. So you hear often hear companies saying that we want to be efficient, we want to be productive. And we're saying that from strategic viewpoint, these are goals. They are driving what organizations intend to do. These are samples. We want to be profitable. We want to be profitable. These are a number of what examples. Now, we come to objectives. So, where have we come from? We see we started with what? Strategic priorities and intent. And then we came to doing a vision and what? A mission statement. And we're saying that these things must reflect in organizational goals. Then, from organizational goals, organizations must also deduce organizational objectives. So, as I said earlier on, these are the basic elements that you can identify from a typical strategic war plan. Strategic plan. And here, we're saying, what was the relationship between the objectives here and the goal. So look at what is here. This is saying that the objectives are the anticipated and the results of programs of activity. And they should always be stated at war, precise, so that organization can measure, all right, whether or not they are achieving their plans or not. So when we come to the objective here, we're talking about specifics. Specifics. And it is very, very interesting for strategic planners to appreciate this. The reason being that at the top, it's just a signal. Top management just gives signal that this is the direction the organization has what taken. At the top, it is just war, a signal. But to identify the direction in terms of nitty gritty at the shop floor, we have to express them into what specific objective. So, for example, University of Ghana, our vision is saying that we want to be work class university. So, the saying work class is a directional sign at the way, at the top. Work class is just at the directional sign, acting as directional sign. But we're saying that what and what must we do to see that we're really, really getting closer to become war, a work class. And we're saying that that direction that the vice chancellor has set for the university, it needs to be broken down into what? Specific and measurable indicators. So it is also pinpointing to you that, all right, a strategic plan cannot, all right, go or cannot be designed without an objectives. Yes? It also implies that we cannot have an objective without a vision and will a mission. The direction ought to be there and we're saying that the direction is translating into certain measurable indicators at the way, at the shop floor. And a key skill that as postgraduate students you need to pick here is that how do I design, how do I identify, how do I develop measurable indicators from a vision and a mission? Vice Chancellor has set a direction for the University of Ghana to become war, a work class. Yes. Then the question is that how do the professors, the deans, all right, determine specific measurable word objective that feed into that top direction for the university? It's a key skill and it's a requirement for every postgraduate world student. Okay? Let's continue. So we have key characteristics of what? Objective. Key characteristics of objective. And we have um, how to go by certain objective. I have done it in such a way that it makes it so, 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 so easy. 
it makes it so 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 easy and this is emphasizing the importance of objective even though organizations have vision mission and strategic war priorities so these elements are so important they're very 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 important after the objective we come to what strategies we come to strategies so organizations have objectives and we say how is the organization going to achieve their objective so you need to have strategies to achieve the war the objective implying that if you take a typical strategic plan of every company yes with the vision mission and everything you have to have a session that is saying that these are the specific approaches strategies are simply saying that these are the approaches we're going to use to achieve our world objective and don't forget that the objectives are coming from the way the vision so it is saying how do we achieve our vision how do we achieve our mission how do we achieve our strategic priorities and intent we need what strategies we need strategies apart from the strategies we also come to corporate policies so again every good strategic plan must also have what policies what are the policies when you are implementing strategy all right certain do's and don'ts must inform how the strategy is being implemented and these are what we refer to as corporate policies for example university of ghana we want to become world class but every year in admitting students they are setting rules regulations and war procedures even how new entrants are admitted into the various halls they are what rules regulations and what procedure all right for example percentage for maybe say um ladies uh, say gentlemen i mean so we're saying that every strategic plan must have what policies so the policies are the procedures the policies are the do's and the don'ts in implementing the strategic plan it's very important and then there's a way that we go about designing the world the policies as well after your policies what is you go to action plans so I have outlined my policies to implement my strategy and I'm saying how do I go about it on so and so day what and what must I do so I need an implementation timetable so sometimes in I mean the papers companies we say action plans some we say implementation timetable and they're basically the same thing and there's a way that organization also go about designing an action plans and implementation timetable and because of times i will skip the slides are there you can check them so i will just uh, skip this ones and then we go to another one another thing that you will also identify in a strategy plan is called a budget a budget a budget so every strategic plan must have it corresponding budget saying that if we implement this strategy how much will it cost the organization don't forget at lecture one we said that strategic plan is used as a very strong funding tool so it has come in here would that mean knowing how much the strategy will cost me how will i know the quantum of funding that i need to source for so every good strategic plan must have what a budget so this this is where we need the finance and accounting student so here the cash budget the cash flow the pro forma profit and loss account everything must come here if it is a 10-year strategic plan you understand based on the expectations in terms of sales and other things you need to have a 10-year pro forma profit and loss account and from accounting and finance point of view yeah every profit and loss account in the balance sheet must also be accompanied by a cash flow statement and this is very 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 important in fact this course is said that uh, it comes with all the skills from the various functional areas 
there is a marketing bit, in, there is an HR aspect, there's information system, there's a financial system, and also there are accounting and all kinds of, every aspect is in here. So budgeting is very important when companies are designing strategic plan. And again, look at the outline. Some of the things that you need to take them into consideration in designing the budget are outlined here. So again, the slides are there for you. We can go into all of them one by one. And so I will just forward them. Then we come to another thing, which is called a project. And we're saying every good strategy, five-year strategy, 10-year strategy, ought to have projects. Projects. What are projects? We're saying in implementing the 10 or five-year plan, it is likely the organization may do something that it won't repeat again. They may build a big office complex. It's a project. For example, University of Ghana, you know, you might have heard about the wonderful tool boots that the Vice Chancellor, you know, was doing for us. And in, in, in the schemes of the university, in what the university does, this is what a project. It's a project. So every strategic plan, every good strategic plan must accom accompany with what? Certain projects. So on campus, you will see a lot of development, you know, infrastructure, what have you. Because these are not the thing the university ordinarily, all right, does. We say it is what? A project. But they are the ones that, that is helping the university to achieve a 10-year strategic plan, which has been outlined in nine main thematic world areas. Okay, so... Projects are very important anytime we're thinking about strategic plan and implementing a strategy. And again, I'd like you to um, refer them. The slides are here. So I will just say, uh, okay. So I have done some explanation. Maybe if you have been introduced to project for the first time. Then another key theme in strategy is called activities. Activities activities so we say in the strategy organization must identify their own activity if i take university of ghana business school for example there are number of activity we do to achieve our strategy for example the library here is one activity our library lectures is another activity examination is what another activity security is what another activity registration is what another activity organizations must profile, outline all the activity, leading them to achieve one output or all the other. So where have we come from? We started by referring to all strategic priorities and intent and then vision and mission. And now we're talking about what? Activity. But there is a direct link right from the top to what we are talking about. Okay? Activity activity and then sometimes if you look on the board this uh, you see there's a question here saying that distinguish between activities programs and war projects so within the program there are activities so there is climate change program here at the university of ghana business school within the climate change program there is what there are activities yeah there's a coordinator they conduct exam. These are the activities within the program. Okay? And I've already talked about projects. So the whole of the, um, um, the, the whole of a setup, maybe like I gave an example about the uh, turbo, it's a project. And then within the project, sometimes we can have programs. And then there are activities within there. So these things need to be understood precisely. Okay, let's move on. Okay, then we've, we're saying that at the end of the day, if we've been able to design our strategic plan, we need to implement it. And how do we implement a strategy? We're saying that in implementing a strategy, companies must think about these things. Number one, 
they have to have a very strong governance structure. So governance structure is about leadership, it's about management, and then they have to have a structure. Who does what in terms of hierarchy, culture? There ought to be a very strong supportive culture supporting the achievement of the strategic objective systems, leadership, you see, and then they have to have implementation plan, project management, and all that. These things must be taken into consideration when organizations are implementing strategy. And then in the end, every good strategy must have a monitoring and evaluation plan. So basically, this is about the basic element of what a typical strategic plan. And all the elements you can think about, they are outlined here. The key issue is that there are do's and don'ts. Or in other words, if you pick a specific team, you have to delve in detail. And that is the skill that we will introduce you to as we go along. So um, this is the end of the lecture about strategic directions and what are the elements that go into a typical strategic plan. And if you go through the slides, which is made available on the online for you, everything is in there. And as we go along, we're going to identify them one by one and go in detail. So let me just find out if anybody has any question so far based on all that we have discussed. OK, so if there's no question, thank you so much for coming. And the slides are online. Um, you can send me email if you have any question, something bothering you. You can email me before we come to class, and let's keep in touch. Thank you so much.